sir. You there? Yes, sir. Could I ask you a question? You got me confused. Okay. You can ask me anything you want to know. I just want to ask you a question. Okay. I was brought up in a Baptist church. Okay. Okay. The Baptist church I was brought up in, my people was Baptist, and they've gone on. Does that mean they've gone to hell? Well, sir, can I ask you the same question about the Jehovah's Witness? Well, that's, I don't know. That's what I said. I'm confused. Okay. Well, is can I ask you in, in your mind, just to help us to see where you are, is there anybody that's going to hell? Could you tell us that in religion? Or do you, we do we actually, are we being taught that everybody in all of their conflict and disobedience in all these religions, is everybody going to heaven or is there anybody going to hell? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, those people, the way I was taught there would be as is, is many was going to heaven to go through an eye of a needle. Okay. So that seems like a fairly small group. Is that correct? From what I understand, that's what I'm, but what I'm asking you, does it, what you're saying, does, because I, before I was seen this faith, I don't know, I'm confused. Does that mean the other people way beyond is gone there too? Or what, what does that mean? I'm confused. Okay, here we go. Now, sir, I'm in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 8. And the Bible clearly says that when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the question you have to ask yourself, sir. Have you obeyed the gospel? Now, when I asked you, have you obeyed the gospel? The first thing that we have to ask ourselves is, is what we are doing and what we've been taught, is it in the gospel? And, sir, the Baptist church is not in the gospel. The Baptist church was never even known of before 1600. So for 1,600 years, nobody was presenting the Baptist doctrine or the Baptist church as a way to go to heaven. Some men just came up with this. And the gospel never contained that form of religion. So can you go to heaven obeying something that is not the gospel in place of obeying the gospel? Well, that's what I'm asking you. I don't, I'm you. Sir, you can answer this question for yourself. If the Bible says obey, that if you do not obey the gospel, then these angels are going to take vengeance on you. If you obeyed the gospel, sir, you wouldn't be in the Baptist church. The Baptist church is not in the gospel. The Methodist church is not in the gospel. And this is not really a hard question at all. Where did all this stuff come from that people call gospel? Where did it come from? Came I don't from, know. Came from man. Now the question is, can, can you be as pleasing to God in something that a man has established as in something that God has established. And here's your answer right here. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. When you go to a Baptist church, which is built on the commandments of men, your worship is pointless. That's what Jesus is saying. You see, in Jesus' day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes, all these Sects of, sect of Jews, they had corrupted God's plan and changed it. And people were worshiping God according to these changed situations. Today, if Jesus were on the scene, he would be telling all these individuals and all these denominations, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I wanted you to teach the truth, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and everybody has substituted the commandments of men. So, sir, I'm very sad to say, and that's why we're so diligent and we're presenting all these tent meetings and all these uh, programs is to try to help you to realize these doctrines of men are going to damn your soul. Well, that, that still didn't answer my question. Oh, it answered your question. You just don't want to look at it for some reason. What part of doctrines of men do you not understand? Would you please tell us tonight? No, I'm asking you. You I'm got it. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're being so hard-headed tonight because I think you can see it. Full well 
you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your Baptist tradition. Now, can you go to heaven like that, sir? Like I said, I was, I'm confused by watching you. you got me. You're not confused, sir. We can all tell that you sound like a sensible individual and you're following traditions and you're rejecting the commandments of God. Now, you think you can get into heaven rejecting the commandments of God and being a Baptist? Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, I was brought up a Baptist. I don't, uh, all I know is a Bible there, and what you got is a Bible. I now, sir, some of the Bible, but I don't understand the Bible. Oh, you understand that there's no Baptist church in there. I'll, I'll, let's make it real simple. Tonight, I will give you $1,000 if you can give us the Baptist church. If you can't, it's a tradition. It's a family tradition, just like you said. And when you follow your family traditions and you reject the commandments of God, guess what? You're not going to heaven. Now, you can understand that, sir. Well, that's why I, why I asked you that, 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 that uh, uh, my uh, people that's gone on, they're not going to be there because they was a Baptist. What do you say? What do you say? I'm, I'm confused. I was brought up like this. I'm confused over this. You're not confused, sir. You just don't want to admit what is clearly in front of you. Let's go over this verse, Matthew 15, 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now, did the heavenly Father plant the Baptist church or did men plant it? Well, see, I, never, I don't know. Yes, you know. You got a Bible, don't you? Can you see the Baptist church in your Bible? I see, I see it on the screen what you're showing there, yeah. Okay, can you see the Baptist church in the Bible? You have a Bible. You know if the Baptist no, church is in there. I've never seen the Baptist church in there, no. Well, well why are you in it then? Well, that, like I said, that's, I was brought up in a church since I was a baby. Now, sir, that's not why you're in the Baptist church. Did, you, did your folks burn coal oil lamps when you were at home? Yep. Are you still burning coal oil lamps today? Not unless the lights go out. Okay. So you were brought up with coal oil lamps, but you learned better that electricity works a lot better. But you were brought up a Baptist, and you've just remained a Baptist. It's because you just want to do it. It's not because you don't understand. It's just because you refuse to look at the Bible for yourself. No, I'm telling you the truth because I don't really understand the Bible. I'm telling you, I can look and see what you're saying, but I don't understand the Bible. I've read Sir, it. I just don't understand you, it. You have not had any trouble understanding these verses that we've had tonight. What part of traditions of men is not acceptable to God do you not understand? A third grader can understand that, sir. Traditions? I'm just saying it's, it's things, you know, like you break down, you... That, that, that words in there you say is from the Greek or whatever. You don't hear me very seldom talking about the Greek. Can you understand this? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. If you didn't hear the Baptist church, you shouldn't believe it. Now, are you going to quit believing it or are you just going to keep on staying in it? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm confused here. Sir. Oh. Sir, I'm asking you a simple question. I could ask a six I could ask a sixth grader this question and get the right answer. If you're supposed to get your belief from the Word of God and your church is not in the Word of God, why do you still believe in it? And it's not because you're confused, sir, it's because you refuse. You're not confused, you refuse to accept what the Bible says. Let me just ask it this way, and let, we'll let our community judge about you. Here's the church that you read about in the gospel. The churches of Christ salute you. Now, you are simple. Tonight, I will give you $1,000 if Like I said, I was, I'm confused by watching you. You got me. You're, I'm very sad to say, and that's why. Good evening, and you are live here with Johnny Robertson on What Does the Bible Say? It is a Wednesday, 9 p.m., and we're ready for our broadcast, and I, <laughs> it just never fails. I end up forgetting something, and so 
that something was. I was going to send a link to somebody. And let's see. I'm going to have to do it on my phone because I don't want you to see it. So I'm going to talk to you while we do this. We're on a live broadcast. And we're broadcasting in Martinsville, Henry County tonight. And we are uh, sometimes broadcasting uh, into two different states. Sometimes we're in three different states. But tonight we are in Henry County. And we are basically in a position to take your live phone calls if you have questions. I hope that my um, broadcast tonight does create a question in your mind because that's uh, basically how we learn is we start talking to each other and we be honest. And let me, I'm sending a link in case you don't know to a friend who asked for it. And so um, they just person who is constantly involved in things and so I just can't help not do these things. So it's probably the case in the last what four or five broadcasts that I have had to do that. And so we're diligent. That was going out to a lady in that just has basically found us and formerly was associating with us and then uh, thought Actually, that we were still in the Marshall Islands, and we're going to show some footage tonight. It just so happens in our show. So here's the thing. If you want to watch us anytime, what you need to do is you need to go to YouTube, type in Johnny Robertson. Simple as that. If you spell my last name right, Robertson. I don't particularly care, but if you're on YouTube, you're going to have to. Johnny Robertson. You will get me, and basically you will, you will end up on our YouTube channel, and we have several different things that you can do. Now, you also, if you happen to be watching tonight, we're on Cable 18. And we're also on Over the Air. I'm not sure what the Over the Air number is. Uh, pretty sure everybody around here knows. And so if you happen to be watching on YouTube tonight and or you're watching Cable 18 and you want somebody to be able to see it that has an antenna that's out in the county, then you're going to have to, let's see, somebody, is that correct? I don't see it. Channel 19? No. Oh, okay. Yellow phone number. Okay, I see the yellow phone number. So, but I can't actually say it. see it because the preview says preview out here. So, anyway, I was talking about over-the-air antenna. So, um... And let my producer, producer know that out here, right where it would be able, I'd be able to see the the uh, phone number. It actually says preview. Got it covered up. So let's move on. Facebook, Martinsville Church of Christ Facebook. You can check us out there. Get maybe some information. And then my email is joeblue81 at gmail dot com. All right, now folks, we are right uh, at three minutes, and we're going to get right into our broadcast tonight and what we're going to do is we're going to use this call as our intro and this is basically what I'm saying about this call is it is our situation as they say 101 it's one of the simplest situations that I see and the gentleman I think is being very sincere He's an older man. I've talked to him before. He was living in Mayadan, and let's pick up at four minutes, and let's see if we can work together tonight to try to end some of the confusion, some of the division, and really start operating on the, like the root problem. Can we do that? Because, you know, when it really comes down to it, how in the world are we ever going to like move forward when everything it seems that we do is divided, confused. Now I'm saying in religion, I'm not talking about the regular world. I think it would help us a lot in the regular world if we could all get it together spiritually. I know that we would have a different attitude about the things that we're involved in. So here we go. Why we're so diligent and we're presenting all these tent meetings and all these uh, programs is to try to help you to realize these doctrines of men are going to damn your soul. 
Well, that, that you still didn't answer my question. Oh, it answered your question. You just don't want to look at it for some reason. What part of doctrines of men do you not understand? Would you please tell us tonight? No, I'm asking you. You I'm got it. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're being so hard-headed tonight because I think you can see it. Full well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your Baptist tradition. Now, can you go to heaven like that, sir? Like I said, I was, I'm confused by watching you. you got You're not confused, sir. We can all tell that you sound like a sensible individual and you're following traditions and you're rejecting the commandments of God. Now, you think you can get into heaven rejecting the commandments of God and being a Baptist? Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, I was brought up a Baptist. I don't, uh, all I know is a Bible there, and what you got is a Bible. I now, read sir, some of the Bible, but I don't understand the Bible. Oh, you understand that there's no Baptist church in there. I'll, I'll, let's make it real simple. Tonight, I will give you $1,000 if you can give us the Baptist church. If you can't, it's a tradition. It's a family tradition, just like you said. And when you follow your family traditions and you reject the commandments of God, guess what? You're not going to heaven. Now, you can understand that, sir. Well, that's why I, why I asked you that, 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 that uh, uh, my uh, people that's gone on, they're not going to be there because they was a Baptist. What do you say? What do you say? I'm, I'm confused. I was brought up like this. I'm confused over this. You're not confused, sir. You just don't want to admit what is clearly in front of you. Let's go over this verse, Matthew 15, 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now, did the heavenly Father plant the Baptist church or did men plant it? Well, see, I, never, I don't know. Yes, you know. You got a Bible, don't you? Can you see the Baptist church in your Bible? I see, I see it on the screen what you're showing there, yeah. Okay, can you see the Baptist church in the Bible? You have a Bible. You know if the Baptist no, church is in there. I've never seen the Baptist church in there, no. Well, well why are you in it then? Okay, we got right down to it. He said, I do not see the Baptist church in the Bible. Now, tonight, folks, I know there's going to be some individual that says, well, I don't see a computer in the Bible. And therefore, that's the same thing as a Baptist church. Now, can I ask you, let's just be reasonable. You know, we talked a couple of weeks ago, and we constantly bring it up, deliver us from unreasonable people, unreasonable men, acting as if a computer is the same thing as an entire form doctrine makes no sense. I mean, that, that is just simply unreasonable. You get down to that, you don't see a light bulb in the Bible. So are we not going to have a light bulb because it's not in the Bible? What we're basically talking about is a form of doctrine. Now, you might be convinced, that's, that's just, I'm saying it's fine for you to be um, a person who says, listen, I need more information. Okay, that's fine. We don't mind actually looking at information that maybe will help us. Look, this is Titus 1.9, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he might be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince the gainsayer. We have to basically hold fast to the faithful word. Now that man said, I'm doing what I've been taught. But he then turned right around and said, that the Baptist church is not in the faithful word. So what do we do? What, what are we going to, uh, what are we basically going to do then if we let him stay in the Baptist church and there's no Bible for it, then what's going to happen to the next person over here that's in the Methodist church, no Bible for it, in the, not in the, in the faithful word. And so um, let's just basically, let's look at when I say we're going to, have a look at the uh, the doctrine, the form. Look at this. Notice this. This is Romans six seventeen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart 
that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. We are talking with a man tonight who is basically saying that he was brought up with a form of doctrine that ended up making him a Baptist. Now, why would he want to do that? Why would you want to do that when what we're talking about is making individuals Christians? Look at this. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass the whole year that they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. He is in a form of doctrine that is actually having him be called a Baptist. Now, push come to shove, uh, he will end up saying, I'm not saying this gentleman, but most individuals, push come to shove, they will end up coming and going ahead and say, well, I am a Christian. Well, then you have to say, well, what kind of Christian? Because you know that he's not a Christian only. He, you end up finding out that persons have then changed from the form of doctrine that ends up making you a Christian. And I have heard people say, well, this verse is actually used, they say, in derision. In other words, they were calling them Christians. And, um, you know, it's the idea that nobody really wanted to be a Christian. That's uh, some kind of, uh, like as I say, a form of derision. They are making fun of them. So let's basically look at another. Now, Agrippa is being talked to. Paul is trying to teach a king, and you end up having Agrippa ask this question or make this statement. Then Agrippa said, almost, said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Now, Paul was a Christian. In Antioch, Paul was actually there in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, that we just noticed a few minutes ago. They were called Christians. He is a Christian. And he is trying to teach Christianity to Agrippa, who is a Jew. Paul used to be a Jew. And... We basically hear Agrippa. Now, some people say this, that Agrippa, they can see Agrippa's face, and he's mocking, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. When you start reading down at the end of this, basically Agrippa ends up telling the governor that had Paul not uh, appealed to Caesar, he would have been free. This individual is looking at this from a perspective that is making him be in, be in wonder. And so... That's what we're talking about tonight. Why tonight are we doing what we do? Now, here we are tonight. We're in December. And what I want to basically do is I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're actually doing when we follow these customs and traditions that we receive from our parents. Now, I'm going to go ahead with this man because there's going to be a moment in here where he really, you know, he basically really grabs a hold of something and we're going to go off of that. Continue to listen. Well, like I said, that's, I was brought up in a church since I was a baby. Now, sir, that's not why you're in the Baptist church. Did you? Did your folks burn coal oil lamps when you were at home? Yep. Are you still burning coal oil lamps today? Not unless the lights go out. Okay. So you were brought up with coal oil lamps, but you learned better that electricity works a lot better. But you were brought up a Baptist, and you've just remained a Baptist. It's because you just want to do it. It's not because you don't understand. It's just because you refuse to look at the Bible for yourself. No, I'm telling you the truth because I don't really understand the Bible. I'm telling you, I can look and see what you're saying, but I don't understand the Bible. I've read Sir, it. I just don't understand you, it. I'm you have not had any trouble understanding these verses that we've had tonight. What part of traditions of men is not acceptable to God do you not understand? A third grader can understand that, sir. Traditions. I'm just saying it's, it's things, you know, like you break down. You that that the words, you know, you say is from the Greek or whatever. You don't hear me very seldom talking about the Greek. Can you understand this? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you didn't hear the Baptist Church, you shouldn't believe it. Now, are you going to quit believing it? Or are you just going to keep on staying in it? Oh. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm confused here. Sir, oh. sir, I'm asking you a simple question. I could, ask a six, I could ask a sixth grader this question and get the right answer. You know why I'm using that illustration about a, a third grader or a sixth grader? You know, we, in, we go in people's homes, Caleb particularly, 
uh, talked to somebody here on Forest Street, right up the road, uh, or you know, right up road from um, the 823 Starling Avenue building, and he's talking to the grown-ups, and while he's talking to the grown-ups, he ends up talking to some children. And basically, the children end up saying, oh, we see that, or he'll ask them a simple question, of, just like I'm asking this man, if it's not, if the church you're in is not in the Bible, where did you get it? And they have to admit that they didn't get it from the Bible, then they must have gotten it from some other place. And, I mean, we all know, unless you think about your believing extraterrestrial, they all know that it came from somebody. And that somebody is their parents and their parents or whatever. And so often the children end up shaming the, the parents because they answer these questions so simple. It is so simple. Now, you might want to know, well, why am I, why are you doing this broadcast tonight? I like this channel. Listen, folks, there are people that are obeying the gospel throughout the United States. We have a friend that's in Georgia. He let me know on Tuesday night, I believe it was, that individual that he had been talking with, and they were uh, basically going through the Bible together, trying to figure out, well, why one of them was one thing. I believe, pretty sure that he had been a Baptist. Maybe not, but there are other individuals in their family that are Baptists, and we're trying to figure out, you know, why it is that we can't be together. And the question that I'm saying that's going to come up is, do you want me to lead the church that's in the Bible? I'm in the church that you read about in the Bible. And I know it's easy to say, or it's easy, and I don't mind this. This is, this is exactly what you should do. You could say, well, Johnny, just because you're in the, and we're not talking about the building. We're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about the body of Christ, which is the church. The body of Christ is not a building. I don't think anybody ever gets confused when they're talking about the body of Christ. Uh, they never think that you're talking about a building that you're in. Now, I'm not. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 he is far above all principality power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in the one that which is that which is to come and he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church now look at the next verse which is his body the church of christ and the body of christ are the same thing and so I'm asking you, would you have me to come out of that and be in something that is not in the Bible at all? That's just the simple question. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. And it might be saying, somebody's sitting in the room saying, see there, there's more than, it's, it's plural, churches. Listen, there are different locations. This particular letter is written to the Romans People in Rome, they're not Romans necessarily. They're people in Rome. And Paul was teaching Jews in Rome. When you, turn, when you leave the last, or you get into the last chapter of Acts, Acts chapter 28, he ended up meeting with the chief elders of the Jewish people. And what does he do? He starts teaching them Christianity. And they basically are calling it a sect. Maybe you want to see that. I hope you do. Acts chapter 28, verse 22. Look at this. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest for us concerning this sect. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. Now, is the church of Christ a sect? That's the question. Now, they call it a, a sect because that's basically what happens in Judaism. The Jewish religion is divided up into several different warring in, uh, conflicting groups of individuals. And I think you know this probably, if, as I bring it up, you'll probably say, yeah, I get that. Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, it may be the case that you don't, you know, you don't know what that is, but I think you can uh, pretty easily um, agree with me tonight that these individuals are, uh, in fact, people in the New Testament that are constantly having trouble. And so, um, I basically am looking at, at, uh, at Paul as he is standing trial 
in Acts chapter 24, verse 5, and I'm trying not to get too many verses up at the same time, but I want you to see this sect. Look at this. Acts 24, verse 25. Sorry, verse 5. For we have found this fellow a pestilent. We have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and is a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. And so basically what they're uh, trying to pin on Paul is that they are creating a new thing. We already have the Sadducees, we have the Pharisees, and then he ends up saying they are bringing in another sect that is associated with this Nazarene that they think that they have killed. And so look at uh, Acts chapter 24, verse 14, and you actually will have a different rendering. And this, uh, this shouldn't be that difficult, uh, really, I don't think, because we all know that the church in Rome that is run by the Pope, they actually would burn people at the stake for what they call heresy. Now you might say, I don't want to learn these words. How can you be an English speaking person and never have he heard the word heresy or a heretic? Well, you, it might be the case that you're not religious, but we're, like, right now I expect that we're talking to people who very possibly have their Bible out. And so in 2414, he says, but this I confess unto you, to thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. Now he said, they call heresy. Now, I, this gentleman basically said, sometimes we use Greek words and he doesn't understand that. But I, I would say this, I believe that he can, if he can use a regular dic dictionary, he can do the same thing with a Strong's Concordance, which has a dictionary in the back. It basically lets you look up the word heresy in the actual part of the concordance that allows you to see everywhere in the Bible that the word heresy is used. And right out to the side of it, it will end up having a number associated with its uh, Greek root. And you go to the back and you just basically look at that number. Now, let's do it. I'm going to show you the number. If you were looking in a book, which we offer for free, a Strong's Concordance, you would see that this is number 139. This Greek word is numbered 139. The reason it's 139 is because it is actually in the A section. Well, why is it spelled this way? It's the pronunciation is basically that way. That's moving from one language to another. Now, here's the thing. So in this particular verse, Acts chapter 24, verse 14, they say that it is heresy. They call it heresy. It's the Greek word 139. Well, let's go back and let's see what it was in verse 5, in Acts chapter 24, verse 5, look what it is, 139, the exact same word. Now, this is really, um, and I tell you, I have talked to a lot of people, and I don't know any of them that I've ever talked to that cannot actually be taught how to use a concordance. We have people asking us for concordances all the time, every level, every so socioeconomical, uh, economic, um, education levels, young people, foreigners, at, when they, they can actually deal with a concordance. And for the older crowd, can I tell you something? If you can deal with the Sears catalog, and you used to, I'm saying used to, that's why I'm saying older. If, if you could uh, order something out of the Sears catalog or J.C. Penney catalog, there is no way that you can tell me that you cannot operate a concordance. Now, I'm just using electronic concordance. So this sect, the sect of the Nazarenes, see what we're doing here? We're basically showing you that these individuals are basically forming their own sect. All right, let's get out of that and let's go back. Now, here we are again. The form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Now, are you... Or, or, I'm saying Paul ended up talking to these Jews and they said, we have heard about this sect that it is talked about everywhere. Badly it's talked about. And so you know, we're basically asking you, is it the case 
that you can figure out what is like the real thing here. What is it that they're doing? Well, they are Christians and they're not a, a part of the Jews. They do not follow the Jews' custom. Now, why are you laboring so hard? Why am I laboring so hard? The reason I'm laboring so hard is because we're laying the groundwork for our discussion tonight. And I said, what time of year is it? We're just gonna basically uh, deal with the idea of where we are right now in our uh, American calendar. All right, are you ready? We're gonna go to Galatians chapter two and we're gonna look at verse 14. Now, I want you to notice something. We're going to deal with some words tonight, and we're, we're just going to show you how difficult we are actually making things. Now, I want to go ahead and get the context. We use this Sunday night, and I'd like to get the entire context to show you what happens if we're not going to all agree to something that is ending up being our standard. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Now what we just are seeing here is division. But look at this. What is the problem? What is the problem, the real problem here? But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, here it comes, livest after the manner of the Gentiles. Now, are you still with me? The manner of the Gentiles. What does that mean? Y'all, what is separating us is basically right there in front of you. The manner of of the Gentiles. Well, what is that? Okay, let's do the same thing that we did when we were looking at uh, sect. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20, uh, sorry, verse 16. Now, in 1 Corinthians, they're actually having, a, also having a division. Let's, let me just start with 1 Corinthians chapter 1 right quick to show you. And it's all through the book. Now, I beseech you, sorry, let me back up. All right, let's get this, this together. 1 Corinthians 1.10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that you, there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same ma uh, judgment. Now look at this. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. See how that's going? They're basically having problems. And one of the problems that they're having is they're all actually wanting to create a sect. You see that? A sect is a, or a heresy and a sect is when you divide up by name and actually that name represents a particular behavior, a form of behavior. Now, in this passage, it says a manner. Watch this. Well, what, what are we actually seeing? One says, I am of Cephas. That is also Peter's name. Well, what is Peter doing in, in Galatians chapter 2? Peter is sometimes living after the manner of the Gentiles. But at other times when somebody comes in that is a high up Jew, he then withdraws himself from the Gentiles. See that? Or before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew himself and separated himself. That's what sectarianism is. It is when you basically party up under a particular manner of behavior and you won't have anything to do with other individuals because of the manner in which they do things. Well, in particular here, I think the culprit is James. Individuals that are Coming from Jerusalem, they're basically having a problem with the conversion of the Gentiles. Why is that? Because the Gentiles have a particular manner that it says they live after. Look at that. So now here it is. This is basically what we're seeing. We're seeing the very thing that we're talking about. There are contentions among you and what's behind it. One of you says, I am of Paul. 
I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Look at this. Paul is the one who is actually trying to stop all of this. You see, he's the one that withstood Peter and James. He, he basically is dealing... Now, I don't know that he really withstood James. It says they came from James. So I'm putting the blame on the influence that is associated with James in Jerusalem. And so these individuals are now acting like Peter. And what's the deal? Look at this. Now, I hope this is going to bring it home to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. What all are they divided over in, in Corinth? I'm, I'm saying just think with me because we're about to hit the nail right on the head when we're talking about what is going on with all of us. You know, a lot of people think that the problems that we have in religion, that they originate sometimes from race. Um, you know, we, we talked last week and we're talking right now about different kinds of churches that exist and they're based on their, uh, their segregation or their unwillingness to be together is based on race. Um, and oftentimes it is sometimes on language. Now, when you ha can't speak the same language, that's a whole other uh, situation. And if you can't understand anybody, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 talks about the fact that if, you don't, if you're not able to say amen, you're able to understand what is being said, then you're basically not able to worship God like that. So, so let's stay together. If any man seemed to be contentious, what it was in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I have heard that there is contentions among you, and it has to do with individuals partying up under particular names, and the reason why they're partying up under these particular names is these men are actually teaching different things. Now, look at this. If any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. Now, manner and custom are the same word. Now I want to talk to you. I want to make the application. When we have problems, let's just kind of make this uh, let's just kind of make this generic so that we don't really get on anybody's toes. And actually, this is something that people joke about. And you know, they make jokes sometimes about things that are actually true, and they're kind of maybe we're trying to make a joke to soothe over something that's really there. Why is it that there are in-law jokes? And a lot of times the in-laws' jokes are made by men. Basically make jokes about their in-laws. What's really going on there? Is it the fact that it's just a basic trait in men that they don't like their wives, parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, things of that nature, particularly the mother of your wife? Because that's where like the real uh, rub ends up going. My mother-in-law, oh, there's probably a thousand uh, one-liners about mother-in-laws, and it just continues to grow. Why is that? Is there just a basic dislike for mothers? No, you love your own mother. Was well, there a basic dislike for your wife's mother? Is it just like ingrained in us to not like our wife's mother? I mean, really, what is it? You know what it is. Your in-laws are not your family and the way you did as a man the way you were brought up did you hear that man well ago listen from a baby i was brought up this way and i said well when you were young did y'all use colo yes I, we did do you still use it now no why i shouldn't have to do that should i i mean we just basically shouldn't have to go through that kind of drill so when we get down to it, I'm talking about us being uncomfortable. When we get back down to it, a lot of times we will point a finger at a thing and say that this is causing me to be uncomfortable. Like, say, for instance, we'll say, well, it's, it's a racial thing. Well, what about mother-in-laws? Why is it that there is so much, like, spite and contention and things of that nature having to do with mother-in-laws, in-laws? It's about custom, y'all. I mean, we're talking right here, the custom. We have no such custom. Well, what are they talking about? Individuals in Corinth are trying to, uh, they're trying to, to bind a custom. What is a custom? 
the manner in which you live, a particular manner. So what does that actually mean? All right, let me go uh, out of this and let me go up here. Let's just see exactly where I am on my uh, slide presentation. Um, I'm fairly certain that this is where I need to be. And let's see, sometimes I actually moving around. Let me just present this to you. You see that? That's where I lived in 1992. You can see there on the, on the wall, it says Majuro, Beauty Free Shop. That is a third world country. It is actually a nation that is called, they are called the Marshallese. That's their, the name of their capital is Majuro. Now, I lived there for eight months, about eight months at, at one, I, I lived there for five years in this particular uh, part of the country, but for about eight months, I was living there and I just became miserable. I mean, it was just so difficult on me in my mind to just basically continue every day in this particular company. Now, I know I love those people. I, I moved all the way over to the Marshall Islands in the middle of the Pacific. It's an atoll, so don't be thinking about Hawaii, whatever. The highest place on there is a bridge. And, you know, it's, it's a difficult place. And people are lovely. But I, I just was miserable. Well, you know, fortunately for me, I had run into a gentleman in Sparta, Tennessee, as I was trying to get over to the Marshall Islands, and he had lived in one of the Caribbean islands, and he told me, he said, now, Johnny, I want to tell you something, because this is going to be really important to you. At some point after you get there, you're going to start feeling like you just don't belong, and you're just going to be thinking something's wrong with you, and you're going to be agitated and aggravated and frustrated, and it's just going to boil over, and you're going to think about coming home. Fortunately, he had told me that ahead of time, and he said, Johnny, it's simply culture shock. Their custom, their manner of living is such that you just can't actually get it together because you haven't learned yet. And you know, a lot of people do go home. They have culture shock and they just can't stand it. Maybe the wife can't stand it or the children can't stand it. I know some people that were working in a country and the children just could not take it. One of the boys threw a chair through a plate glass window at school and had to come home. So here's, where we, here's what we're talking about. Now, can you see, the, you see the, the skin tone that we're looking at here? These people are not the same skin tone as I am, and it had nothing to do with that. Uh, we stayed there for five years, as I said, and then we went back again. I started going back in 2002, and we ended up moving there again in 2003. Left you lovely people in a very nice television broadcast um, career, you might say, as we, that we had going in 2003, and we moved back over there again into another part of the Marshall Islands. What are we talking about? We're talking about their customs and their manners. They are totally different. Now, what, what, was, the, what was the key? The key to removing the, the discomfort was somebody having to decide that they were going to learn the other. Well, I'm, we're the only Americans. These folks that are with us there, that's Lori standing there with baby Caleb. The other two Americans, rebellious as they call them, they are actually coming through, passing through, they're leaving. So we're the only Americans associated with these folk right here. This is the, these are members of the Lord's Church, the Body of Christ, the Church of Christ that meets in Majuro, Marshall Islands, the capital city. And so, you know, would we want to Americanize these individuals, Westernize these individuals? No. What are, well, how, what are we going to use as our standard when you've got people that have totally different manners? Well, we could actually have some contention and we could basically uh, pretend that we're taking on their manner of life and we really weren't. And then let's say some Americans come in later and we start acting like we don't really like the Marshallese and we begin partial. We could even do that in this particular country. We could have, you know, started hanging around with the Americans that were living there. Don't know how many there were. There weren't really that many, but that's kind of what people do sometimes. They, they start hanging out with individuals that, you know, you feel comfortable with all of a sudden. Well, no, we basically learned to live after the manner of the Marshallese. What does that mean? 
Well, it doesn't mean that we did everything they did in their custom, but we learned why they do what they do in their custom. And then we all basically said, you know what? We've got to follow what the Bible says in order for us to get along as far as the spirit, our spiritual welfare. And so here's where we move over to this particular passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. What are they doing? Basically, Paul is going to lay out a, a way that these individuals can stop having these problems. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. Now, I know that Paul does not go around making everybody live like a Jew. Paul used to be a Jew. I'm very certain that he was very comfortable with the Jewish religion. In Galatians chapter 113, you follow down through there, and you'll see that he ended up leaving that. We're in Galatians right here, so why don't we just look at it? We can look at the fact that he was very well able to... Let me, I'll just go ahead and go to it. He is very uh, well able to uh, handle himself in the Jews' religion. This is Galatians 1 verse 13. For you have heard of my conversation. That does not mean the way he speaks. Look at this. Let's use our dictionary again. My conversation. What is that? The word conversation is going to end up being in the same line as what we're talking about. Manner, uh, behavior. Look at this. It's not going to be the exact same word but it's going to end up being translated a, a behavior. See that? 390. My behavior, my conversation, Old English in the King James Version, it ends up being my conversation. What are we talking about? Well, it's basically Paul saying, you know my behavior. Galatians 1.13, in the past, what was it? My conversation, my behavior in times past in the Jews' religion. So we all know that Paul is very comfortable with the Jewish religion. Well, what's the problem? There is no problem with Paul because he's willing to actually live after the manner of the Gentiles. Now, what are we really talking about here? I mean, when you break it down, it, they were talking about food. They were talking about customs in this particular instance. It's not, it is not allowed for Jews to eat just any kind of food. They have Dietary laws that are laid out in, in Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, and they're not allowed to actually mix with Gentiles to the degree that, that they're going to eat things that are unclean and do things that are unclean. And y'all, a lot of this has to do with them simply being able to live without diseases. God is blessing them in a special way so that other nations would be able to see that this is a sophisticated group of individuals with the laws that they have they're actually not having the diseases that the people in Egypt had, and that's a lot of what that has to do with. Nevertheless, it is, a, it is something that brings them through time, and it distinguishes them from everybody else, which is extremely important. Why? Because God planned to bring Jesus from the line of David, tribe of Judah, which is basically Judaism. He is going to bring Jesus. He makes all of his promises in that fashion, from Abraham, then he lays out the different descendants right on till you get to the King David and the tribe of Judah. How did he do that? Part of it had to do with these dietary laws and particular rules that would keep them apart from the Gentiles. You would know that Jews and Gentiles, what is another one of the things? Circumcision is one of them. And that's going to be the contentions as well. So what is Paul saying? Yeah, Paul is saying you don't have to be circumcised. Paul is not the author of the New Testament. Jesus is the author of the New Testament. He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding these individuals. Inspiration. They are actually having inspiration. God breathed. They are being told what to do when it comes to the form of doctrine. So what do you do? Here we are. We were basically saying that Paul is very comfortable being a Jew, but he is no longer a Jew. What were we actually talking about? In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, we were saying, how is it that Paul is going to fix the contention? Be you followers of me as I am also of Christ. Do I need to be a Jew? No. It Was Christ a Jew? Yes. Well, did Christ want everybody to be Jews? No. What, is, what does Christ want you to be? He just said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, is Christ divided? Is Paul, has Paul been crucified for, uh, for you? Why are you actually dividing up under these names 
and it has to do with their manner, their behavior, their manner of life, their behavior, and their custom. So, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I have delivered unto you. What is that? That's basically the information that's in the scripture that is given to Paul by God. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. See how this is being laid out? He's laying out the authorized order. And basically what we, we have is individuals in this particular area that are having problems and contentions associated with order. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored through his head. Every woman that prayeth or prophesied or, or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonored her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Which head are we talking about? We're basically backing up here and seeing who is the head. This is not talking about your head. It is talking about headship. It is talking about authority. And so these individuals are actually having customs. They have customs that end up demonstrating by certain behavior that you are not honoring somebody's authority. Notice this. He gets, goes down, it, if the woman be not covered, let her also, yes, she was shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For indeed, for man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Now, who is going to say that you ought not to cover your head if you're a man? Someone might back up and say, well, if you're praying or you're prophesying, you know, my first recollection immediately is going to be when King David's son, Absalom, decided to overthrow David. Basically, David left Jerusalem with prayers with his head covered. Now, why would we think that that would be something that is incorrect to do? Well, you might say, well, that was, you know, that's a pretty far out, stretched out argument. Um, have you ever seen Leviticus, the layout for the priests? The priest had special bonnets. You know what a bonnet is? It's a hat. So you see how this is going? Well, let's drop down because it, it's, it could be like the man from Maadam was saying. He was basically saying that you know, he's confused. The Bible is confusing to him. And it might be if you just stayed right there and just, you know, pounded it out in your, like in your head. I got to figure this out without continuing to read what is being said. Do you remember how we started this? If any man seemed to be contentious. We have no such custom, neither the churches of God. What does that actually mean? It's like what you all are arguing over and the custom that you have in this particular area Corinth, we don't have those customs, neither the churches of God. Someone might say, oh, it says the church of God there. No, that's fine. The church of God and the church of Christ, they are basically the same thing. Well, how do you get that, Johnny? I, I don't know what to tell you, but that you have to put all of this together and um, you end up coming out with what the Bible says all the way down the line. Let me take a look right quick. This is John 17, verse 10. I think I put in 10, 17. Jesus says, all mine are thine. Thine are mine. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. You see that? What belongs to Jesus belongs to God. Let's look it up bigger part. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but them which thou hast given me for that they are that. And all mine are thine and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. You see that? What belongs to God belongs to Jesus. What belongs to Jesus belongs to God. The church of God. The church of Christ. The body of Christ. Well, why don't you say the body of God? God never had a body. He's using uh, metaphors so that they'll be able to understand everybody has a body and he 
ends up talking to them in that fashion in 1 Corinthians and other places so that they would re realize their relationship to each other. We are body parts, and what did we have a while ago? Jesus is the head. Simple authority. Jesus is the head over all things. Well, 1 Corinthians 11, he said that God is the head of Christ. Now, are we making any sense here? I just want to ask you now, as we are looking at this and we're talking about the season that we're in, can I ask you this? Everybody, I'm going to go to the internet here that I already have some things dialed in that I want you to, to look at. And this is Freedom Baptist. And I was looking at what Freedom Baptist would be doing this year during what is called the holidays. We'll be having our Christmas fellowship right after the service this Sunday, coming Sunday, the 18th. Please feel free to bring hors d'oeuvres or a sweet treat to share. Now, where did you get Christmas? Now, I'm going to let you listen just to a little bit of Larry Luffman that I have dialed up. And we're just going to actually have a course. This is 101 and how to divide. Are you ready? Take a listen. Any will are and become misguided today through false teaching because people will take scripture, okay, that was written to a nation, written to a different group of people. And they will try to apply this in their own doctrine and their own theology that fits their motive and their manner of their specific belief system. And belief system, if I go to, if I go to, this in their own doctrine and their own theology that fits their motive and their manner you hear that their manner he probably was brought up as a baptist believing that jesus birthday is december the 25th now can i ask you this are we ever going to make is he going to be able to make any headway let's just say with muslims Let's just say that they do. All of a sudden, all the Muslims become interest, interested in Larry Luffman. And so Larry Luffman is trying to teach them. And so when it comes to December the 25th, like when, when you, they basically are, are worshiping with Larry Luffman or uh, let's see what else we have. Um, Larry Luffman or let's just say that we're, um, I think I actually have a slide for, uh, Mercy Crossing, I'm fairly certain that I do. It's, if you're dealing with uh, Mercy Crossing and you're converting a Muslim and you come down to Jesus' birthday, what, how are you gonna, how, what are you going to do with them? Because the manner in which they were brought up, there is no such thing as Jesus' birthday. Well, in the manner they're brought up, there is a Jesus in the Muslim religion, but Jesus isn't the Savior. He is not the Son of God. And, you know, he's just basically a prophet to them. But you get them and you're over here converting them and you, they basically say, well, how, what am I supposed to do this, this Christmas business? Well, it's not in the Bible. Are you going to basically press your manner, your custom? Like Larry Luffman said, some people who are teaching false doctrine, they do this because of their manner well over at mercy crossing it says our christmas project we apologize for the inconvenience we have met our hundred box giveaway and registration is now closed man you just missed it didn't you that's their christmas project over there but nevertheless they're in on it everywhere you look people are pretending that jesus birthday is actually on december the 25th and when i say pretending it's just the manner in which we people deal with this particular holiday why do they do that well, I would say the real reason behind it, it is, it is perpetuated by merchants. What? What do you think? If you're a person who is a Bible believer and you're, you're basically saying, well, we're going to do what the Bible says, then where did you get that Jesus was born on December the 25th? It's not a biblical truth at all in any form or fashion. It came from, again, the people who follow the Pope in Rome. And then the rest of the people just went ahead because they take those 
customs and they end up putting in a little bit of it in their new form. And the next thing you know, you've got individuals that are following the Pope in certain things, but they refuse the Pope to be the head of the church, but still they're taking the Pope's doctrine. See how that works? Why do you do that? Why do you keep that up and pretend? Well, who's behind it? Merchants. Well, who's a merchant? Well, who actually makes merchandise? What does that mean? Listen, I think you know what it means. You just don't understand what I'm actually getting at. Let's see what 1 Peter 2 verse 1 actually says in regard to merchants. Look at this. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Here's the truth. Jesus was not born on December the 25th. You do not know when Jesus was born. That's just a fact. There's no one that can actually demonstrate that Jesus was born on December the 25th. Well, Johnny, I don't like that. And I don't like people who actually say that there is no such thing as Christmas. Well, look at this. That's basically you speaking evil of the truth. Well, why would you do that? And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you. You know, one of the biggest years, uh, sorry, biggest days in the pastor's life every year? It's Christmas. Why? Because everybody gives the, the pastor Christmas money. There's no telling how much these pastors and the pastor's wife take up at Christmas. And then if, if you know, you just be, happen to be lucky, like uh, one pastor over in East Martinsville, his anniversary is in, Dece in uh, January. So pastor anniversary comes right after Christmas, neither of which is in the Bible, and they're charging $40 a head over there for grown-ups at the pastor's anniversary. $20 for 17-year-old and unders. How about that? Making merchandise. Why would they do that? Covetousness. You see what we're saying? This, y'all, is not that difficult. Now, I, I just, you know, we're going to go off here in just a minute. And I want you to be left thinking, are you following a custom and are your customs causing you to have contention? Let's back back up. Let's back back up. Do you like your mother-in-law? Have you ever had problems with your mother-in-law? Is, really, is it really your mother-in-law? Or is it the case that you're actually having issues with the way she was brought up, which is the way your wife was brought up, and that gets brought over into your marriage. And as a man, you're basically having problems with that interruption. And is that why people don't like mother-in-laws? All mother-in-laws are not like that. And some men don't really mind taking up some of the manners or the customs of the people that her mother come from. And in particular, there are a lot of men that actually take up a part of their wife's behavior, which is Christianity, and they leave their parents totally behind and vice versa. Wives do that too. They basically realize my parents' manners and customs, they are just not based on Bible truth. And I am not going to go around here pretending that the Baptist Church or the Methodist Church or the Pentecostal Holiness, Cleveland, Tennessee headquarters, none of that, including Jesus' birthday, is biblical. And if we're doing these things, it's not profitable. What, what do you mean by that? Not profitable. Y'all, let me see if I can hit this verse late at night in my brain. Acts chapter 20, verse 17. Uh, let me think. 2020. Look at that. That's, I should be thinking about vision. Paul said, and now, and he said, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and taught, have taught you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Paul said, I kept nothing profitable. Do you know if you're actually following some Christian practice, so called, and it is not something that Paul, one of the other apostles, in what you have in the New Testament, that they said that Jesus said to do, it's not profitable. And I tell you, Christmas is not profitable. It's a merchant's plan to take a lot of your money and you feel better about pretending that you're glorifying Jesus, which you are not. He never asked for it, nor did he ask for all these sectarian 
divisions, that's basically saying the same word over again, division sectarian, that he'd never asked for that. So what did he ask for? He basically asked for us to all settle in our mind that we're going to do what the Bible says. How about that? That's exactly the cue for me to go off. We're trying to tell you what the Bible says, and we put our information out there. I don't have my phone number up tonight, but if you are local, it's 276-806-2150. I hope you can remember that. If you get on our YouTube channel, you'll end up seeing my phone number and Caleb's. Actually, it's up on the, the outro right now. Both of our phone numbers, those are cell phone numbers. You can get in touch with us, whether you're in Calhoun, Georgia, or whether you're in um, any area. And I picked Calhoun because we're praying for people in Calhoun, or if you're in Rona. Thanks for being with us tonight. I always ask for what's the Bible say. God bless you.